Good evening. We have bad storms rolling into the area, so you might hear thunder in the background. Tonight's daily devotional is coming from Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 6, John 10, verse 4. I love you for who you are, not for what you do. Many voices via for control of your mind, especially when you sit in silence. You must learn to discern what is my voice and what is not. Ask my spirit to give you this discernment. Many of my children run around in circles, trying to obey the various voices directing their lives. This results in fragmented, frustrating patterns of living. Do not fall into this trap. Walk closely with me each moment, listening for my directives and enjoying my companionship. Refuse to let other voices tie you up in knots. My sheep know my voice and follow me wherever I talk. I'm going to read another one. <clears throat> this has come from Luke 12, verse 25 through 26, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18, Psalm 36, verse 9. Refuse to worry. In this world, there will always be something enticing you to worry. That is the nature of a fallen, fractured world planet. Things are not as they should be. So the temptation to be anxious is constantly with you, trying to warm its way into your mind. The best defense is continual communication with me, richly seasoned with thanksgiving. Awareness of my presence fills your mind with light and peace, leaving no room for fear. This awareness lifts you up above your circumstances. Sorry, I had to shut off the phone for a second. I lost where it was. Awareness of my presence fills your mind with light and peace, leaving no room for fear. This awareness lifts you up above your circumstances, enabling you to see problems from my perspective. Live close to me. Together, we can keep the wolves of worry at bay. Satan and his minions are always out there, and remember, they know where to attack each person. It's how you handle problems that come your way. It's how you handle it. Refuse to worry. God's in control. He knows the day we're born. He knows the day that we're going to come back home. He knows everything that's going to happen in our lives. Refuse to worry. He's in control. Remember that story um, that I told you about my friend? that was killed, that she, she was shot. Um, we went to sleep, friends. We woke up. She just didn't want to talk to me anymore. We were such close friends. We were going to get an apartment together. This is when I was, um, like, my daughter's age. Many, 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 many years later when I was married. I mean, I, I was just like, wow. Hey, okay, girl, good night. Talk to you tomorrow. She didn't want to talk to me anymore. Never could figure out why. To this day, I don't... Well, let me rephrase that. Um, I don't know what was going on in her head. But, so, as far as that goes, I don't know why. But I know why it happened. When I was married, I'm sitting on the floor, and I see, um, I think it was Granberry, um, two women found shot in the head in the car. And then her picture shows up, and I was like... My jaw dropped, and I was like... As soon as... As soon as I saw her picture, I heard, that's why... She was starting to get her life together. She went down the wrong path for a while. <clears throat> Getting her life together. Why was I spared? She wasn't. Only God knows. You know? I'm thankful. I, I, I wouldn't be here with my grandson. My daughter. But little things like that. You don't realize sometimes. I mean, I never thought it. I never realized... You know, and it, it, something as little as not being friends with somebody anymore could literally change your life. God's in control. If me and her stayed friends, that was a girl's night out. What are the odds a friend of yours of 20, 25 something years would be there? Pretty good. Probably one of the first people you'll call. I would have been in the car that night and I wouldn't be here today talking to you guys. So when problems come your, front, your way, refuse to worry. Give them to God. Remember, God's in control. He sees things that we don't. 
he saw that there was a good chance I might have been in the car that night. I know I'll be seeing her again one day very soon. Her name was Shauna. Um, you can look, look up her story online. Shauna Ferris, Granberry, Texas. This is going off the um, Daily devotional, but um, I never mentioned this. I want to mention this. It's God's so awesome. He's so awesome. <coughs> My daughter was a competitive cheerleader. And one day, I remember Shauna telling me uh, she was never close to her mother. Her mother was a drug addict. She was never close to her mother. But she was close to her aunt, her Aunt Peggy. Well, one day... I'm at cheer with um, my daughter, who's now 29. You know, Desi's 29. But at the time, I think she was um, 12, maybe 13. Maybe 13 years old. I, I can't remember. Maybe 13 years old. Anyway, um, she, no, she might have been in high school. Anyway, anyway, I don't remember. It was so long ago. But um, <clears throat> I'm talking to my friend about um, Shauna. There's this lady sitting in front of me. At the end of the call, she turns around. She goes, excuse me, how do you know Shauna? I was like, she was my best friend. She goes, I'm her aunt. What are the odds, you know? Well, me and Peggy are friends to this day. And I was able to tell Peggy something she never knew. She said, um, I said, you know, there's something Shauna told me. She says, what was it? I said, she told me that she wishes that you and her mother were closer sometimes, because she didn't get along with her mom. Her mom was a very strong drug addict. And, um, and we always we always prayed for her. But then she, um, she ended up passing away, too. But anyway, anyway I said, um, she um, always wished you and her mother closer. And she said that sometimes she wished you were her mother. And Peggy got a tear in her eye. And um, what are the odds? What are the odds? All these years later. That I'm at cheer practice with my daughter. And there's a lady in the room. Sorry, that's Tom in the background. Um, there's a... and um, In case you heard that noise in the background, that was Tom coming in. What are the odds? All these years later, at cheer practice, Peggy, uh, Shauna's aunt is sitting, is sitting in front of me. And I'm able to share something with her that she never knew. You know? God's in control. You know? So whatever you're going through, say, you know what? I refuse to worry. I'm putting it in God's hands. But you know what, guys? We're going home so soon. There's a good chance we could go home this year. But if we're still here next year and we're all praying we're not, I'm not saying we're going to be because we, we don't know. But if we are, just don't give up. Because that's what Satan wants. And remember, brownie table. We have so much to look forward to. We see everything happening. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. We see where this is going. So we are going home, and we are going home soon. So refuse to worry. And remember, God loves you for who you are. God sees your heart. He sees your heart. I love you guys. God bless you. And I will talk to you soon.